Busters, welcome back. Falling in love with your coworker? Already having an office romance? If so, this is for you. The Sex and the Workplace deck covers all the angles of the seven boss problems that make you unpromotable and unpay raiseable while having an office romance with your coworker or colleague, plus how to fix them. This is installment number four out of seven, so it's time to confront those of you who may be thinking, what? Seven boss problems and their fixes over seven installments for the rather straightforward issue that is office romance, really? Yeah, I get it may be emotionally intricate, sure, all relationships are but organizationally intricate, and to such an extent that would merit seven installments? Are you insane? No, I'm not insane. I'm highly experienced in how teams work and why they don't. There is nothing straightforward about an office romance. And I'm not talking about the romantic aspects of it. That's none of my business. You guys are consenting adults. You are peers as I stressed in the first part of this deck. So there's no subordination issues or sexual harassment of any sort. Therefore, do whatever you want. Just know that your perspectives as the participating head of a heel schmoopies is irrelevant per se. And I use the plural schmoopies because hopefully you're both watching this together as I have suggested previously. The only relevant perspectives are those of your teammate and your boss. And because it is so, I'm here to assure you, against your will, your office romance is detrimental, more than you know or care to acknowledge, to your chances of landing that promotion and or pay raise you so desperately want. Which is why this clear and present danger is the focal point of this Sex of the Workplace deck and this video within it. Therefore, if you choose to skip this video, you will be exponentially upping your chances of being blindsided by your boss passing you over once again. However, if you choose to stick around, you will find out how this huge blind spot you have regarding your office romance makes you indeed unpromotable and unpayraisable without you even knowing. This video will have your blind spot completely busted, enabling you to know how to fix those seven boss problems your office romance has created, thus saving yourself from yet another heartbreak and finally making yourself eligible for that promotion and pay raise. I think it is totally worth it. I hope you now think so too. Hi, I'm the Boss Problem Buster, founder of the Pay Raise Commando, a senior organizational consultant of 24 years, having worked across cultures, industries, and ranks with 7,250 employees trained between us, my team and I. Yeah, I said it right, 7,250. I'm also a social psychologist with a master's and a bachelor's degrees, both with honors. My team and I train passed over corporate professionals like you to get that pay raise and promotion you're overdue for so that you can finally kill your Monday blues before you sink further and bring your inner joy back, which is the best part of my job and the goal of this channel, kill your Monday blues and bring your inner joy back. So if you'd like to get a promotion with a pay raise, or a pay raise independent of a promotion, kill your Monday blues and bring your inner joy back, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so that we can meet again. Now back to the salt mines. Okay, let's do this. You must accept that there is nothing really private about your office romance, contrary to what you think. And don't let me be misunderstood. <laughs> That's a great song. Let me make this clear. Your personal lives away from the office are absolutely private. However, any aspect of those personal lives, again, plural, because hopefully you're both watching this. So any aspect of those personal lives that is evident in the workplace, all the more so that impacts coworkers and superiors directly or indirectly any such aspect 
is absolutely not private and is therefore everybody's business. Indeed, anytime your personal behavior interacts with other people's performance, you have de facto wavered any claim for privacy you might have otherwise had, especially when your personal behavior negatively interacts with other people's performance as, it, as is evident all through this deck in everything I've put before you. The truth about office romance is that there are so many interpersonal and organizational aspects to it. It is very, very intricate. Heck, I needed to work hard to narrow it down to only seven boss problems. I could easily do an entire seminar on this, the intricacies being so abundant and prevalent. And you know what else some of these seven boss problems are? Invisible. Invisible first and foremost to you, Schmoopies. Go ahead and watch that uh, Schmoopy Seinfeld clip once more and extrapolate from that how annoying and disruptive you guys probably are to everybody around you at the office. I say watch it once more because I already enclosed this link to the second part of this deck. Watch here if you've missed it and I'll put it down in the description as well. But maybe by now through everything we've talked about since, you are better equipped to finally fully get it. Plus it's hilariously funny. So you have this huge blind spot regarding how annoying and disruptive you guys are to everybody at work and how this detracts from your chances of getting that promotion and or pay raise. Therefore, this crucial blind spot puts you in the diametrical opposite corner of where you want and need to be in order to be eligible for that promotion and or pay raise. This entire deck is geared to giving you the tools you need to acknowledge just that and to enable you to urgently course correct. Plus, this deck gives you the compass with which to do so. But here the plot thickens even further, which is yet another manifestation of how orga organizationally intricate office romance really is. Your boss may have a blind spot of his or her own. Thus, he or she may not investigate the implications of your office romance thoroughly, meaning they would probably not invest the time and effort needed to clearly define the seven pro boss problems it creates as we have, nor potentially would, the, would your boss even have the managerial know-how to do so. In all my years as, a, as an organizational consultant, I can think of only a few managers, if any, whom actually bothered or could detect and define core boss problems. That's what they paid us to do. They usually noticed symptoms only, sad but true. So most probably your boss would just notice that your team members are growing increasingly annoyed with you. And since it is obvious there's something going on between you two lovebirds, and since the grapevine is in overdrive over you, the sheer amalgamation of it all, even without any specific breakdown, will put your boss off of even considering you for that promotion or pay raise they would have otherwise considered you for. Which is why you need to invest the time your boss won't in regard to your blind spot and his or hers. Why you? Because it is your goal that this blind spot is hindering. Therefore, it is on you to fix it. You want it, you deal with it. You need to study this deck carefully and focus on your boss's point of view, not your own. Why? He or she is the one who will make the call regarding your promotion and pay raise. So he or she is the only one that counts. In order to do so, to see things from your boss's point of view, you need to understand his or her potential predicament should they choose to promote you? I'm sick of this his or her all the time. So from this point on, your boss is a he for the sake of this video. No offense 
Of course, it can be a she, let it go and let's move on. You must remember that your boss has his own performance issues to worry about without taking on the extra baggage that comes with you guys. He, he does not need this extra noise. So until your boss has the time and inclination to deal with it directly, i.e. to confront you, he will just prefer to bury you, so to speak, somewhere in the team or department where you can do the least harm rather than promote you. Indeed, such a move on your boss's part, promoting you, is very likely to backfire on him three ways. Number one, promoting you or giving you a pay raise will make for a bad counterproductive role model for everybody else. Seeing that one can be disruptive and rewarded for it will cause your boss even more boss problems in the future. No boss wants that. Number two, promoting you will burden your boss with your baggage even further. If we're talking about a potential promotion for you within this same team or department you're in, the one your boss is the manager of, then this higher promotion for you means your boss will have to deal with you more closely than before, thus amplifying the seven boss problems he didn't want to have to deal with to begin with. So why would he do that? He won't. Three. Promoting you might taint and blemish your boss's reputation. Here there are two options depending on what potential position you could be promoted to. Option A, um, if we're talking about a potential promotion outside of your boss's team or department so that you would become a direct report of a colleague of his, then your boss will have to deal with the burden of whatever reputation you will carry over to that other team or department. And since you can now better acknowledge how disruptive your office romance really is for both the industrial peace and the operational effectiveness of the team, then surely you can find it in yourself to understand that the reputation you will carry over to that other team or department may not be a positive one, thus tainting and blemishing your boss's own reputation for choosing to promote you. So in this case, as in the previous one, there is no upside for your boss, only a potential downside. So why should he promote you? He won't. The same principle applies for the second option. If we're talking about a potential promotion to a position that would make you your boss's peer, then all the more so, all of the above is true. Burden-wise, if you become your boss's peer, he won't be able to confront you in the same way he could have when you were his subordinate. The whole dynamics completely alter. In other words, he won't be able to tell you off as easily. So trusting that he does want to tell you off at some point, he, he just can't be bothered with it right now. Why would he want to make you his peer, which will make it more difficult to confront you? He won't. And reputation wise, the danger in this second option is even greater. Why? Simple. Promoting you to a position that would make you your boss's peer would also make you your boss's boss direct report. So he would naturally have a vested interest in the decision and would be intimately involved in it. Thus, it wouldn't be up to your boss alone to make the call, but he will have to rely heavily on your boss's recommendation because he doesn't know you as well as your own boss does. And therein lies the danger to your boss's own reputation. The danger is not only present as in the previous option, but even more tangible. Why? Because before, your negative reputation would be an embarrassment vis-a-vis -a, -vis a colleague, whereas now your boss might lose face over you 
vis-a-vis -vis his own boss under these circumstances, who's going to take a chance over you when you are embroiled in this office romance that is the root cause of this whole entanglement? No one in their right mind. No one. This relates back to the tremendous importance of, a dis of understanding, truly understanding your boss's psychology, both as a human being and as a manager, a human being and a manager and a manager whom is himself under scrutiny from his boss, just as you are by him. I say relates back because um, your boss's psychology was the focus of the second video in our other deck called Passed Over for Promotion or Pay Raise. There, I proved how your boss actually dreads you after having passed you over and how you can use it to your advantage. Watch it here if you've missed it. I'll put it in the description below also. The point is, wherever and whenever a pay raise is at stake, whether through a promotion or independent of one, your boss's psychology is the number one thing you should fully, deeply, thoroughly understand and gear toward even before you up your own game. That's how critical it is. And so if you can't be bothered with learning how your private affair with your coworker is rippling all over your performance and therefore your team's performance and therefore your boss's performance. If you can't be bothered with it, then you are too self-centered or maybe just too lazy to be deserving of a promotion and a pay raise to begin with. So it should serve you as a clue as to why you didn't get it until now. Food for thought. Okay, that's it for now. Join me next time for the second to last part of this Sex and the Workplace deck in which we will dive into the rest of the boss problems that make you unpromotable and unpay raiseable while having an office romance with a coworker or colleague and how to fix them. In the meanwhile, go back to work. I can't help you get that pay raise and promotion if you don't actually do the job.